Hi, I'm Diana. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about my journey from love to betrayal and triumph. I always believed in making a difference. That's why I founded my eco-friendly fashion brand. It wasn't just about style. It was about sustainability, about changing the world one garment at a time. My dedication paid off. The brand skyrocketed, and so did my name in the industry. Magazines wanted interviews, investors lined up, and amidst this whirlwind of success, I met Ethan. Ethan was different. He wasn't dazzled by the limelight that followed me. He talked about the planet, about our shared dream of a greener future. He was a renowned environmental consultant, and our paths crossed at a climate action conference. I remember our first conversation like it was yesterday. Diana, I've been following your work. It's impressive how you're reshaping the industry, Ethan had said, his eyes reflecting genuine admiration. Thank you, Ethan. I've read about your initiatives, too. It's inspiring, I replied, feeling a connection. Our shared passion for the environment sparked something more. Dates turned into a relationship, and within months, Ethan proposed. It was romantic, under the stars, at our favorite nature reserve. Yes, Ethan, I will, I exclaimed, tears of joy in my eyes. But beneath the surface of our perfect love story, something else was brewing. Ethan's interest in me, I later realized, was not just about love. It was about my wealth, my success. Initially, it was subtle. Diana, you should invest more in green technology. I know just the right opportunities, Ethan would suggest, his voice laced with concern. I trusted him blindly. Of course, Ethan. Let's make our future greener, I'd agree, handing him the reins to my finances. But then, the changes became more apparent. He started making decisions without consulting me involving himself more in the company. Ethan, why did you rearrange the management team without telling me? I questioned him one evening, my tone a mix of surprise and annoyance. Diana, love, I'm just trying to help. Your brand could do so much more. He'd soothe, his words honeyed but hollow. I pushed my doubts aside, attributing his actions to his love and zeal for our shared vision. But deep down, something felt off. It was as if I was slowly losing grip on my own dream my own company. One evening, as we sat discussing our future plans, Ethan's phone buzzed. He quickly turned it face down, but not before I caught a glimpse of a message from someone named Amber. Who's Amber? I asked, a knot forming in my stomach. Oh, just a client. Nothing important, Ethan replied swiftly, his voice a tad too casual. But I wasn't convinced. Something about his hurried response, his fleeting glance, told me this was more than just a client. As days passed, Ethan's behavior grew more distant, more secretive. Meetings that ran late into the night, sudden business trips, and hushed phone calls became frequent. I shared my concerns with my best friend Julia over coffee one day. I feel like I'm losing him, and myself in this relationship, I confessed, the weight of my worries evident in my voice. Diana, you need to be careful. Love can blind the best of us, Julia cautioned, her eyes filled with concern. She was right. I had been so blinded by love, by the idea of a perfect partner, that I ignored the signs. But not anymore. I decided to confront Ethan, to seek the truth. But I was not ready for what was about to unfold. This was just the beginning of a journey that would take me from the heights of love to the depths of betrayal, and eventually, to a triumph I never expected. Julia, my best friend, and a sharp financial analyst, always had an eye for detail. One afternoon, she called me over for what I thought was our usual catch-up, but her tone was serious, her eyes troubled. Diana, there's something you need to see, she said, handing me a folder. It was filled with financial reports from my company, marked with red flags. What's all this, Julia? I asked, feeling a cold sensation creeping up my spine. There are discrepancies in the company's accounts, Diana. Large sums of money transferred to unknown accounts. Unauthorized investments. It's serious, Julia explained, her voice stern with concern. I felt the room spin. Ethan had been overseeing these aspects recently. But Ethan assured me these were solid investments for our green initiatives, I murmured, trying to make sense of it all. Diana, I know Ethan's your fiancé, but you need to confront him. This looks like embezzlement. That night, I confronted Ethan. I remember the anger and fear bubbling inside me as I held the financial reports in my trembling hands. Ethan, 
What is this about? I demanded, trying to keep my voice steady. Ethan looked at the papers and then at me, his face a mask of calm. Diana, love, you're misunderstanding. These are all strategic financial moves. You wanted the company to grow, didn't you? His words were smooth, but his eyes, they didn't meet mine. But these investments, they're not even in green technology, and there's no record of them returning any profits, I countered, my voice rising. Diana, trust me. I'm doing this for us, for our future. It's complicated business strategy, he replied, his voice soothing, but it no longer had the same effect on me. I went to bed that night with a heavy heart, my mind a whirlpool of doubts. Ethan's words echoed in my mind, but they clashed with the hard evidence Julia had shown me. The following week, things took an even more bizarre turn. I was at a high-profile gala, one that Ethan had excused himself from attending due to a sudden business trip. That's when I saw her, a glamorous socialite, renowned for her extravagant lifestyle. She was Ethan's type, but what unsettled me was the intimate way she talked about him. Oh, Ethan, he's such a darling. We've been seeing a lot of each other lately. Such a generous man, she boasted to her group, unaware of my presence. My heart sank. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place, forming a picture I didn't want to see. Ethan's late nights, his trips, the financial discrepancies, and now this woman, talking about my Ethan as if he was hers. I confronted Ethan again the next day. Ethan, who is this woman? And don't lie to me. I heard her talking about you at the gala. I said, my voice quivering with a mix of anger and pain. Ethan's face turned white, then red. Diana, it's not what you think. She's just a business acquaintance. You're overreacting, he stammered. But his usual confident demeanor was gone. But I wasn't convinced. Business acquaintance? Is that why our company's money is flowing into accounts linked to her? I shot back, the evidence clear in my mind. Ethan's denial continued, but the trust between us had crumbled. The man I loved, the man I had given control over my life's work, was a stranger to me now. I retreated into myself, feeling betrayed and alone. The love story I thought I was living turned out to be a facade, a play where I was the unwitting protagonist. But I wasn't going to be a victim. I was Diana, a woman who built a successful company from the ground up. I was going to get to the bottom of this, expose Ethan's lies, and take back control. I just didn't know how, yet. Life, as I knew it, had been a beautifully wrapped lie. Ethan's love was a facade, a strategic move in his game of greed. But I wasn't going to let this break me. I was Diana, the woman who built an empire from scratch. It was time for a counter move. I met Julia, my financial analyst and confidant, at a quiet cafe, away from the prying eyes of the city. Julia, I need your help. We need to expose Ethan, but it has to be concrete, irrefutable. Julia, always the voice of reason, nodded in agreement. I've seen the numbers, Diana. His embezzlement is clear, but we need more to take him down completely. What do you have in mind? We set a trap. But for that, I need to play the part of the oblivious fiancé a little longer, I said, my voice steady, but my heart racing. Back home, I continued my act. Ethan, I've been thinking. Maybe we should expand even more. What do you think? I asked, baiting him with the prospect of more money. His eyes lit up with greed, not love. Absolutely, Diana. I'll look into more investments. Trust me. The trap was set. Julia and I meticulously documented every unauthorized transaction Ethan made. But that wasn't all. Ethan's affair needed to come to light, too. One evening, Ethan mentioned a gala he had to attend. For business purposes. I knew this was my chance. I wish I could come with you, but I'm swamped with work, I said, feigning disappointment. Oh, don't worry, darling. There will be many more. That night, I attended the same gala, but in disguise. A wig, glasses a dress unlike my usual style. There, amidst the glitter and glamour, I found Ethan with her, the socialite, laughing at his jokes, touching his arm. My heart ached, but my resolve hardened. I approached a group of influential guests, ensuring Ethan and his mistress were in earshot. Did you hear about the latest scandal? A renowned consultant caught embezzling from his eco-entrepreneur fiancé. I heard they're exposing him tomorrow. What a fall from grace, I whispered dramatically. The news spread like wildfire. Eyes turned to Ethan, whispers filling the room. The socialite, 
sensing the impending storm, excused herself and left him alone in the crowd. Ethan's face paled as he realized his world was crumbling. The next morning, the story was all over the news. Eco-entrepreneur fiancé duped by greedy lover, the headline screamed. I watched as Ethan's reputation disintegrated, his facade of integrity shattered. Ethan returned home, panic in his eyes. Diana, this is a misunderstanding. I can explain, he pleaded. I faced him, strength in my stance. The only misunderstanding, Ethan, was me believing you loved me. It's over. Ethan's fall from grace was rapid. The socialite, his supposed love, left him to salvage her own reputation. The investors and clients he had wooed with his charm now saw him for the fraud he was. As for me, I reclaimed my company, tightening the reins and rebuilding what Ethan had tried to destroy. The pain of his betrayal lingered, but it didn't define me. I was more than a chapter in someone else's deceitful narrative. I was the author of my own story, a story of resilience and empowerment. Ethan tried to reach out, probably realizing the extent of what he had lost. But some bridges, once burnt, can't be rebuilt. I ignored his calls, focusing instead on my company, my passion, and most importantly, myself. This was not just a story of betrayal and deception. It was a story of a woman who, when faced with deceit and manipulation, stood her ground and emerged stronger. It was a story I never expected to tell, but one that needed to be told. And to you, my dear viewers, remember this. In the face of adversity, never lose sight of who you are and what you stand for. Betrayal might break your heart, but it doesn't have to break your spirit. The fallout from Ethan's exposure was swift and merciless. The man who once held himself high in society's esteem was now drowning in the tide of his own making. His clients abandoned him, his career as a consultant imploded, and the law was knocking on his door. Legal actions for embezzlement and fraud were initiated, and he faced financial ruin. It was a downfall fit for a Greek tragedy, and at the center of it all was Ethan, reaping the whirlwind he had sown. Meanwhile, I stood at the helm of my company, steering it back to calm waters. The betrayal had been a harsh lesson, but it had also been enlightening. I implemented new, transparent policies and strengthened the core values of the brand. My story, from being duped to standing victorious, resonated far and wide. It became a beacon of inspiration, particularly to women in business, reminding them of their strength and resilience in the face of deceit. As for me, the wounds of betrayal healed into scars of wisdom. I was invited to speak at conferences and events, sharing my story of overcoming adversity. I became a symbol of empowerment, a voice for those who had been silenced by manipulation. One day, as I was preparing for a keynote speech at a women's empowerment event, I received a call. It was Ethan. His voice was a shadow of its former confident self. Diana, I... I'm so sorry for everything. I was wrong. Terribly wrong. Can we... Can we meet? He stammered. There was a time when that voice would have made my heart flutter, but not anymore. Ethan, there's nothing left to say. You made your choices, and now you must live with them. I replied, my voice firm. But Diana, I have nothing. I've lost everything. I realize now that you were the best thing that ever happened to me. Please, can we start over? He pleaded. The man who had once been my world was now begging for forgiveness, for a second chance. But some things, once broken, can't be mended. Ethan, I have moved on. I suggest you do the same. Goodbye. I hung up, cutting off any ties that still lingered from our past. The event was a success. As I stood on that stage, sharing my journey, I saw faces in the audience reflecting my past self, full of hope, ambition, and unfortunately for some, the scars of betrayal. But my message was clear. We are not defined by the deceit of others, but by how we rise above it. My company flourished, branching out into new sustainable ventures, each more successful than the last. I found peace, not in the arms of another, but in my own strength and independence. My story had gone from a tale of deception to one of triumph, a narrative of a woman who faced betrayal and emerged not just unbroken, but stronger and more determined. Betrayal might wound you, but it will also teach you the most valuable lesson, the strength of your own spirit. Thank you for following my story. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. You never know whose life you might be touching with these tales of resilience and courage. And that concludes the remarkable and transformative journey of Diana.
Before we part ways, I'd like to leave you with a thought-provoking question that I believe will spark some meaningful dialogue among you. If you found yourself walking in Diana's shoes, faced with the pivotal decision she had to make, would you have extended a second chance to Ethan after his significant downfall? Or on the contrary, do you hold the view that there are certain actions in life that are simply unforgivable and beyond redemption? This intriguing query delves deep into the complex realms of trust, forgiveness, and the possibility of redemption. It challenges us to reflect on our own values and beliefs about second chances and the capacity of individuals to change and improve themselves. I encourage you to engage with this question in the comments below. Let's initiate a rich and deep conversation about this topic. Your insights and perspectives are not only valued, but are an integral part of this community. Share your thoughts, experiences, and let us explore together the multifaceted nature of human relationships and personal growth.